breaking story at this hour. The cabinet has approved foreign investment in other financial services. This has to do with the NBFCs now and this was a budget proposal which has now been cleared by the cabinet. So essentially minimum capitalization norms as mandated under the FDI policy have now been eliminated and uh, also uh, we understand that FDI will be allowed beyond the 18 specified NBFC activities in the automatic route in other activities which are regulated by financial sector regulators. Our colleagues are standing by now to take us through this. Uh, Ritu and Prashant Naira. Ritu, coming to you first. Uh, any more details on what the Cabinet has approved today? Approval is concerned. Uh, uh, there are 18 uh, sectors, NBFC related activities in which automatic FDI is allowed. Uh, as per the decision today, uh, uh, the activity, NBFC activity in other financial services, uh, if they are regulated uh, by a, either a regulator or by any government institution, then in such a, a financial uh, sector activity related to, it, to the NBFC sector, uh, automatic FDI will be allowed. Uh, if uh, the NBFC uh, activity in the other financial services uh, space is not regulated, then of course uh, uh, they will have to go through the government route. Last but not the least, uh, the minimum capitalization norms uh, uh, for NBFCs, that has been done away with. The logic being that uh, the regulators have already, uh, uh, in their own, own uh, rules, have specified the minimum capitalization norms and hence the FDI policy that is not required and hence uh, the minimum capitalization norms in the FDI policy regarding NBFCs, that has been done away with. All right, Ritu, let me go across to Prashant. Now, Prashant, uh, is this going to make any material difference as far as the stocks are concerned or the market point of view tomorrow? Have you been able to get a sense from the market? Uh, good evening, Shreen. I don't think so. Uh, because, I mean, if you look at the sectors or categories or activities, rather, where NBFCs were operating in and where 100% FDI through the automatic route was already allowed, I mean, it basically covers, uh, uh, you know, most uh, areas in which stocks are listed, be it housing, finance, which is which is which as I can see is one of the big ones. Stockbroking already allowed financial consultancy, investment advisory services. I mean, I've got the list of 18 sectors, and that basically covers it. So what we are talking about is other uh, uh, NBFCs which are governed by some some regulator where this is now going to be announced. Two areas come to one's mind. One is commodity broking companies. I mean, there are listed stocks there. GOJ, BNP, Paribas, for example, listed but far and few in between. The other area is infrastructure development funds. You know, banks like ICICI, uh, IDFC, and a few others back uh, what are called IDFs, which, uh, which in turn invest in infrastructure assets. So, you know, I can think of two other areas where now under automatic route, FDI is going to be allowed. But from a big market perspective, I think, you know, this was already done. Uh, and uh, in most areas, the limit was already up to 100%. Back to you, Shireen. All right, so don't expect any material impact from a market point of view. Prashant and Ritu, thanks very much for decoding that decision for us. Uh, we do have uh, reactions coming in. Gaurang Shah, Assistant Vice President at GOG, BNP Paribas Financial Services, joins us. Prashant, hang in there because you were talking about GOG. Uh, uh, thanks very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. I'm not sure if you've heard what the Cabinet decision has been, but essentially it's taking forward the decision of uh, what the Finance Minister had proposed in his budget. And now minimum capitalization norms under the FDI policy will be done away with, and FDI will be allowed in NBFCs beyond the 18 activities it was already allowed. In. What does this mean uh, for somebody like you? Well, I uh, won't be able to comment specific on uh, Geojit uh, Sharin, but yes, uh, like Prashant was just mentioning, I think it does open up a lot of opportunity. And for all those players who are existing in the domestic market and have a reasonable presence and reach, uh, my sense is that uh, those companies will tend to benefit. But again, I have some doubt in terms of uh, the immediate uh, uh, funds or uh, deals getting tied up. I think we need to just understand the fine prints uh, and possibly take a call. I know you don't want to talk about GOG specifically, but uh, for commodity broking companies and stock broking, I mean, you know, uh, 100, a limit of 100% is already allowed, FDI. Uh, in commodity broking, it wasn't. Uh, it's not clear the release from the government doesn't say whether this is allowed, but it's a sector which is regulated and hence would, I would assume, fall under sectors which are now open for full 100% FDI. Any thoughts, Gorang? So, Prashant, I think, uh, yes, there was uh, a little bit of concern in terms of, uh, you know, the commodity business kept out of this particular purview. But my sense is, and like you rightly mentioning, 
uh, it will definitely come in with some riders, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not too sure about those uh, as we speak. All right, Parag Zariwala is also with us, banking analyst with Relegate. Parag, thanks very much. Good evening. Uh, thanks for joining us again. Uh, you know, so the cabinet is, is, has essentially approved uh, foreign investment in NBFCs, uh, which are which are regulated, which have some sort of a regulator. Now, 18 odd sectors or categories of NBFCs, there was already 100% FDA under automatic route allowed. Uh, we are talking about some of the others where this was not allowed yet. Uh, have you looked at, at this and what do you make of the announcement which is coming in? How meaningful will this be for NBFCs as a space? So, you know, uh, as you rightly said, you know, uh, if you look at NBFC, the NBFCs which are into a, a lending business, I don't see any reason why they should be, uh, uh, you know, uh, be benefited because all those uh, NBFCs like probably housing finance companies or somebody like, uh, vehicle finance companies like Chola or Mahindra Finance or Zira Price, but they are already allowed to have 100% for foreign ownership. So I don't think they they're going to benefit much. Yeah, but you know, I was I was also listening to the uh, previous uh, 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 on your channel itself that basically it can allow to some of the specialized activities like commodities and etc. So I don't see. A uh, you know very great sea change for uh, NBFC sector as a large. So it may not be material, uh, materially significant at least from a market's perspective tomorrow morning.